Okay, so for students who really struggle with phonological awareness, phonemic awareness, uh, whether they're, you know, the little five-year-olds or the older ones who just don't have it yet, um, we have to often go back and figure out what are the issues that's happening here. And the reason that's uh, very clear to me is I was once working with a, a high school student uh, with dyslexia and other issues, and I was asking, you know, what's the first sound in this word? And okay, what's the second sound or the third sound or what's the next sound? And the student wasn't sure what first, second, third, fourth meant or first, next, last. Wasn't sure on that. So how could he answer my questions? And um, that shocked me the first time that happened. So, you know, this these things happen where we assume comfort with our terminology, but it might not be there. So dial it back and let's talk about what the student is able to do. So whether it's a young one or an older one that's still struggling, go back to a very concrete uh, example. And I might say, okay, uh, this is a phone and I'm going to give the information. This is a phone, this is a pen. So once I've presented the information, then I can say, point to the phone, and hopefully they've pointed to it, and, and then point to the pen. And then I can say, now which one was this? And I'll say phone, and which one was this? And I'll say pen. Now, I'm gonna take one of them away, I'm gonna take away the phone, what's left, and have them say pen. Once you've presented the information, once they've pointed to it so we know that they're distinguishing it and then they can identify it and say phone and pen then I can introduce I'm going to take something away what's left but I had to make sure that the other processes were secure before I can say I'm going to take one away what's left and so do that with a couple of very make sure we're secure on that with a couple of very concrete objects then we can go into the more abstract. If we know we're good with the concrete, so let me show you um, uh, this. So this is my jam board, and I'm I will do the same thing. I'll say, okay, this one's a cup, this one's a cake, okay, and then you know if I want to let them do it, I can ask them to draw it. I'll say point to the cup or make a mark under the cup or make a mark under the cake. And then I can say, now, which one is this? I can say cup and I can say which one is this and I can say cake. And then I can take something away. So what I forgot to start with is whenever, just good practices, whenever I'm working with a uh, Jamboard, the first thing I do before I do anything else is make a copy. Just good practice. Make a copy because when we mess it up, when we delete things, we want to have a copy. Let me go back to that. Okay, so then I say the student has said this is the cup and this is the cake. Then I can say, okay, I'm going to. I'm going to take one away. Ready? You tell me what's left. Ready, set go, what's left? And they can say cake. Or I can say, I'm gonna take away the cup, what's left? And let them say cake. All right? so might do that a couple of times. Okay, this is a foot, this is a ball. Which one's the foot? And let them say, which one's the ball? Great, what was this one? have them produce the sound, the word, which, and what was this one? That's ball. Okay, great. I'm gonna take away the ball. You ready? I'm gonna take away the ball, what's left? And if I can just, you know, maybe I can just do that and have them say foot, but at least we're practicing with taking something away and being able to identify what remains. So that part of the, of the exercise is not an issue. And that it's very concrete. So we could do this with a couple of things and say, okay, this is a dog, this one's a house. You know, which one's the dog or point to the dog, now point to the house. Okay, if I take away dog, what's left? 
whether I take it away or delete it or something and let them say house. So I'm using compound words. They don't even have to realize it's compound words. We're still just getting familiar with the concept of having portions, you know, sounds, and then taking something away. So once we've done this with a few things, and we're, I know that they're secure, I'll say, okay, oh, you know what? I couldn't find the pictures. Ready? I couldn't find the pictures, but here we go. This one is the sun, and this one is the set. Ready? This one's the sun, this one's the set. Which one's the sun? And let them point to it with, they can mark it, they can laser it, whatever they're going to do, or they can say the yellow, but I prefer pointing. One's the sun. Okay, and which one's the set? Good, ready? So this was sun and set. I'm going to take away the, what's left? I'm taking away the sun, what's left? And they can identify it as the set. And I've not had any issue when I, with my very low students, when I break it down this much, get it? So it's very, very visual, very concrete, starting very concrete and then becoming visual. So I can do this a few times and actually, you know, delete it or move it away. And we can do this with a few compound words, starting with the compound word level. And say, okay, ready? I didn't have a picture, but this one's the book and this one's a case. Okay, this is the book, this one is case. Um, Hmm. Which one was the book? Let them indicate. Which one's the case? Let them indicate. Ready? So this was book. This was case. Ready? I'm going to play a trick on you. I'm going to play a trick. I'm going to take away case. What's left? Let them say book. Uh, so giving them a very concrete. So once we're okay with the... Um, Compound word, uh, uh, I'm trying to get this back. <laughs> Once we're okay with the compound word, I might go back and just do, okay, ready? I'm just gonna use my hands and say, okay. So now this one is, hmm, let me think of another way. <gasps> this one is mail, this one is box. This one's mail, this one's box. Ready? Uh, which one was the mail? Which one's the box? Ready? So what was this one? And what was this one? Okay. You ready? So I'm going to put a trick on you. Mail box. I'm going to take one away. Watch this. What's left? I'm going to have them say box. So going from something very concrete to a pictorial reference to just the manipulatives to something just as simple as my hands still gives them this uh, and have them work at this level for a while and that may be as far as they can go for a while but as they're listening to it and they're processing that you know that the exercise is happening in their brain and they just needed that visual representation that scaffolding to start with so um, and hopefully, eventually, we can get to saying um, sun, set, sun, set. Take away the sun, what's, uh, but I would also teach my students to use their fingers too. Okay, so it was sun, set. Which one was this? What's this? I'm going to take away the sun and let them see if they can figure it out, which one they're taking away, say what's left. So uh, once I've gone through um, the compound words, I can go to syllables. And, and uh, with syllables, I like to start with things very familiar. So maybe it's their name. And because a lot of students, even very young students, have been writing their name. So if it's a two-syllable name, that's easiest. If it's not, I, I'll go to, uh, you know, my, you know, laid, 
law or whatever, but they haven't seen my name in writing. So that's less meaningful. So, you know, if they're friends names, I'll find one, someone close to them with the two syllables, and then we'll go by, by their syllables. Ready? So this, you know, this is together. This is Susie. Yes, Susie, I've got your name here. Ready? But I'm going to split it up. This one is Susie and have them show it Susie. Ready? What was this part? What was this part? So after, if I know, feel I no longer need to have them point, because the next step would be to point. So after you've introduced, you could point and then ask for the response. If we're solid on that, you know, we take the scaffolding away. If we're not, I still have to have them point. Point to the Sue, point to the Z, okay. And if we're solid, then it's like, okay, which one was this? Which one is this? Sue. Okay, now I'm gonna take one away. Ready? I'm going to take away this one. What's left? Or whatever names, you know, even if it's mommy or daddy, whatever, something that they're familiar with having seen in written form, so it gives them a little more scaffolding. Uh, and then I can take it away. Or I might try words that they're very familiar with. A lot of kids have a lot of sight words, but they, you know, the sound is still meaningless, but they've memorized it. And so if this is a word that's familiar to them, I'd say, oh, you know, this is baby. And I'm going to say it with you. This is baby. Or I could put different colors. Baby. Point to the bay. Point to the B. Good. Which one? Wait, wait. Which one said A? Have them indicate. Which one said B, right? And what was this one? Whatever I need to do to make sure that they're solid, that these two cards here are representing different sounds. It's a syllable, but you know, that syllable is a sound to them. And say, okay, I'm gonna play a trick on you. I'm gonna take one away and you're gonna tell me what's left and what's left. And hopefully they'll say bay. So I, I've had good success with working very concretely like this. Um, I haven't had any students where I could not get uh, solid an understanding of removing a sound. But of course, there's there are going to be kids out there that'll stump everyone, and then I can do it again with the with the blocks and whatever it is that I'm going to use at a syllable level, and do the same thing. This one is table. Okay, this, I've made a table here. Do you see my table? This part is table, and point to the ta, point to the bull. Which one is ta? Or uh, what does this say? This say, so we have table, and I'm going to take one away. What's left? So I can do it with syllables. And then once uh, we've done syllables, I might then do my hands again and use my syllables with my hands and four fingers. And eventually, I would go to individual phonemes working the same way with words that they know and familiar with. So this is no. Okay, so this says no, no, and have them point to the n, have them point to the o, whatever. I, and I don't really care if they know it's an open syllable, blah, blah, blah. They've probably memorized this word, and whatever it is we're doing, we're still, at this level, we are going to reinforce that these symbols represent sounds. Okay, so going through the show it to them, have them show it to you, have them produce the sounds, and then take one away. Uh, so uh, I might do this for a couple of words and then have them then go back to using hands. Or for sounds, I tend to use my fingers. And as the teacher, I will mirror. So it's for me going this way, which for me is backwards, but for them it would look right. And, um, or if I use my right hand, which is on the left, I will still go in the order. Uh, but when we get down to the sounds, 
they are often able to then put a sound on each finger and um, then be able to isolate or remove. So I just had a little eight-year-old uh, non-meter and no phonemic awareness. It was, or phonological, it was just awful, nothing. And within two weeks of going through some of these exercises, plus blending in and being introduced to sounds, she is now manipulating two and three sounds um, here. So it can happen quickly, even for the really struggling students when we start with very concrete to visual representation to then more abstract. So I hope that helps. And thank you for all you're doing to help all of those students that we